Hey, I'm Ron Rodos, and welcome to our journey through the real book number 235. It's a great Pat Metheny tune called Missouri Uncompromised, working through the whole book one by one. And thanks for joining me here, whether you're doing the same or just hitting certain tunes and checking them out. Really appreciate it. Um, keeps me going knowing that you're watching. So thank you. Um, as with all the other jazz piano lessons in this series, we're just looking at some different aspects of the tunes that you might not come across elsewhere. Uh, things that I've learned um, over the years or have figured out by playing these tunes or um, explored myself and like to pass them along to you, share it with community, right? We're both musicians and helping each other out, so thank you. Um, basically, um, Pat Metheny, you know, um, uh, comes from the American Midwest. Is, is a lot of his tunes refer to the, these wide open spaces or... Um, the hills like the Ozarks, which are in Missouri. I played a wedding there once. That's the only time I've been to Missouri. Flew into the airport, drove to these beautiful uh, mountains and uh, small mountains at the time, you know, where I was at least, and um, uh, got some experience of, of what it was like there. You know, I remember driving from the airport to the, um, on the highway to the, where the resort was in the Ozarks. There were signs along the highway for music in, in clubs or dance venues. And they were, a lot of them were country music, country or bluegrass. And you hear a country music thing in Matheny's music, like it's an A chord at the beginning, and he's got the second in there. You know, that's from, you know, that's sort of country, or now it's in pop too, but like, putting that second in there, you know, it's not necessarily bebop, right? He's sort of combining the jazz with this country element, a little bit of pop. Um, and uh, this tune flies, flies around. Uh, it's a very guitar-like melody. It spans two octaves, uh, more than two octaves, two octaves and a sixth, very short time. It's because on guitar you go from one string to the other. You, know, you don't have to move your fingers so much. Piano, we have to move our fingers a lot. So maybe it's a guitarist getting us back because most of the stuff he plays, you know, um, uh, uh, coming up when he's learning other tunes from the real book or you know such or fake books, he had to play tunes that were written for sax or piano on the guitar. So now he's writing a guitar tune that we have to deal with. So uh, turnabout is fair play. Um, it's a great tune. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it, other than a couple. Well, a couple things. One is that it's got an A chord. It's not major seventh. It's not sixth. It's not traditionally jazzy. It's the A. But we can put some of those other, we can superimpose anything on the major scale over it. So we can highlight this, the G sharp if we want. You know, it doesn't mean that we can't play it in, in our lines. The second line is interesting because he has these poly chords, or, or at least chords over a, a, a different bass note. So he has B flat over A. Now that sounds harsh when we play it on piano. But if you're a guitarist, particularly with a mellow sound like Matheny's, and there's a mellow sounding bass player playing, so you're playing B flat on guitar and the bass player is playing A, it softens the rub a little bit. So it doesn't sound as harsh when you hear him play it. It just sounds a little kind of interesting and maybe a little odd in a good way. It sounds harsh here, so we don't have to play it as a full chord. We can sort of arpeggiate it. And then immediately quickly goes to D flat over A flat, E flat over G, D over F sharp. All those are inversions, but the first one, B flat over A, a little like, where's that coming from? And then he's got the E, goes down to a D, and then that D does not resolve to the expected C sharp in the A chord, but it just goes to an A. So, a um, little unusual um, chord sequence here. Well, um, you know, I think it's all by feel. B flat over A, and then he has the D flat over A flat. Kind of relates to the unfolding of the melody. Probably wrote the melody and these chords at the same time and saw where it was going. It wasn't a predetermined chordal complex. And then at the end, uh, it says no chord. I like keeping an A under there, but it's basically an, an A lick. And Got an F natural in there, applies a D minor. Maybe you could harmonize this somehow. Let's see, A, E, B minor, or D minor, D minor six, E. I bet he might, I don't know, he's, a, he's a, certainly implying chords here. I don't know if he wrote it with chords and then took them out, but it's sort of an A chord, E, D minor six, G, uh, 
it um, E at the end, the five chord. Um, it's like box music. He, he could just write a violin part, right, with no accompaniment, and it implies chords. So, um, I mean, certainly someone like Matheny would have come across box music at some point. So the, all these influences come out, whether we're thinking of them at the time or not. It's very Bach-like, actually, the, the uh, last eight measures here. Um, to some thoughts about playing um, Missouri Uncompromised. Have fun. I'm going to start by um, improvising over an A pedal. I'm just going to A pedal tone maybe with the fifth in between. Um, I'm just going to improvise kind of in a light way, get into the groove, create a groove, and then go into his melody. So see you on the other side. It sort of ended the way I began with that up in that register with these nice A chord. I like getting that G sharp in there and the F sharp. Bring in some different colors, like splashes of colors over the, the basic A two chord. 
Um, hopefully this will get you started on playing this tune or some of the others that we don't usually come across in the real book or you know we sort of just turn the page okay I'll get to that another time or I don't know what that is right this is an introduction to that that's one reason why I'm, I'm putting these together so hey thanks for joining me really appreciate this if you uh, want some links uh, there's some free stuff uh, instruction my, my ebook um, you'll find it below my video courses there too really help you play with um, more of understanding more joy in your playing hopefully as you understand things learn step by step with a place of broadening that's kind of the goal however you get there that's that's my goal for myself and for you um, really appreciate you joining me here next time we will be checking out oh boy John Coltrane's Mr. PC with its fast repeated notes that are very difficult at least for me to play on piano we'll see how we do um, but in the meantime enjoy the journey and let the music flow <laughs>